What's up, everybody? Oh, look at you, Gunner. Not, one up, wasn't enough. You, you went with the, the three? The three hey, there? Man, look, we still have an hour and 20 minutes to go, man. I'm hungry. I'm a growing boy. I need Jeez. I need nourishment. Oh my God. All right. You're gonna be we're gonna have to peel you off the ceiling. You start throwing that down by, by the time right. the uh, all right. It's all right. It's quite all right. I like it. Um all right. So Jalen Hurts, guys. <laughs> as, as I smoothly segue into that. Um Jalen Hurts. What is going on? Oh, there you go. <laughs> Against the Steelers, 19 for 28, 285 yards, four touchdowns, no picks, 10.2 yards per completion, a 140.6 passer rating. All the touchdowns uh, that he threw were more than 25 yards. You think about this for a minute, just to put it in perspective, last year, so that's through uh, seven games, right? So last year, he played 15 games. Remember, he missed a couple games at the ankle. Uh, 3,100 yards, a little over. 16 touchdowns, nine interceptions, and 87.2 passer rating. Rushed for a buck 39 or for 139 times for 784 and 10 touchdowns. So um, his passer rating is almost up 20 points, about 18 points uh, percentage, whatever it is. He's going to demolish the passing yards. He certainly will surpass 16 touchdowns. It looks like the interceptions are going to project out to less than nine. I mean, almost across the board. He won't have as many rushing, you know, yards, but who cares? Um, he is a vastly, vastly, and I'm not breaking news here, vastly improved quarterback. It's exactly what we had hoped going into the season. We all went in saying, we're well, not all of us, some of us, some people didn't want him, whatever. Some thought he was anointing him the, the greatest ever. But a lot of us went in saying he, he deserves this year. Uh, he did enough last year to earn it. Am I a hundred percent sold? No, I wasn't. But from what I've seen from this guy, he's combined the work ethic, the understanding of the system now and being comfortable in it for two straight years. And he's grown just as a, a quarterback, as, as the plays that you make on the field, he's grown into mm -hmm. now an elite quarterback and he's elite. Um, I, I think if you're the Eagles, you got to be doing backflips at, at, at the way that he's, really come into his own this season. No question about that. No question about that. He's um we all knew he was going to get better. And we just didn't know to the degree of how far he could take us what what we thought that he didn't have. A lot of people thought all right, he'd never be able to read a defense. He's banging it out now. You know, he's his pre-snap read. We talk about pre-snap reads, the same pre-snap reads that you have with the elite level quarterbacks. You know, like, like, you know, you look a guy like Brady, um, Drew Brees, seeing things before it's going to happen, checking to the plays to get you out of a bad play into a good play. He's shown that he can do that. How many bad plays he's taken, taken us out and then had big plays with? I mean, he's, 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 he's done that. We talk about the, the people were talking about the power of his arm, the strength of his arm. He always had the power and strength in his arm. It's just, could he throw guys open? Mm -hmm. And now that he has, the trust in the receivers that he's throwing to, you could see it. Then, you know, I mean, his ability to, to, to drop dimes and, and, you know, just like on the, the touchdowns he threw uh, this last weekend, he has a touch. He has a touch on his deep balls. And we talked about his mechanics. Can he mechanically be a drop back quarterback? Uh, ah, da, da, look what he did in this last game against, you know, the Steelers. That wasn't RPO action. That was all straight drop back throwing from the pocket. So he's erased and alleviated everybody's, you know, all oh, he can't do this, he can't do that. He's done it at a high level. His mechanics are superb. He gets his hips around, he twists his hips, he gets, he stays with, you know, compact his throwing motion. He gets the ball down the field. He's throwing guys open. He has a deep ball. He has a touch with his passes. He's changing the offense. He's doing everything. A frontline quarterback is do, can do his his progression as a passer and his trust in his receivers has taken this team to another level. It's on his shoulders. That's why this team is is seven and zero. His ability to play the way he's playing has put his team on his back and and made them a contender in the NFL now. Mm. What do you think, Gunner? 
I'm impressed the most with his ability to throw a ball in a tight window accurately now, something he did not do on a consistent basis a year ago. He's done it extremely well now. We knew his athleticism, uh, the level of his athleticism, what it, what it brought to the table. But now he has checked off the boxes in all the other areas that we had questions about all offseason, all this summer, being able to go through progressions, being able to hit targets more than he misses targets, being able to step to the line of scrimmage and call an audible when he has to, depending on what he sees across the line of scrimmage. He has done all of those things exceptionally well. That is a significant reason why this team is 7-0. and You know, we can talk about them having one of the best offensive lines in the game. We can talk about the opportunistic nature of that defense. But it all starts with the quarterback, as is the case with most teams. You know, this guy is running this offense. It's like having three offensive coordinators now running this offense, from the head coach to your OC to your quarterback. You basically have three OCs running this offense now, and they're all in sync. Uh, And a lot of times, even when things are out of whack, they make a positive play out, out of it, whether he's able to step up and run uh, by a little time, duck and duck away from coverage and float outside and hit hit a target on the move, especially to his weak side now, as Barrett said, turning his hips, squaring up more and getting the ball down the field with more authority. Uh, he has done everything that we wanted to see him do and question about him coming into the season. All the boxes are checks right, checked right now in his overall game. Yeah, look, I, and I think you – the big thing is, uh, obvious. You got to be able to play at the end of the day. I, I, I get that, but the way that this guy's a leader of men, you know, I, I just I can't get past this. I, it, the way that the the veterans quote this guy and and follow this guy and reference him all the time, he's exactly what a quarterback is. He's an influencer in the locker room in a positive way. We we've seen yep. it be a negative, right? We've seen it be a negative. Not the case here. This is a positive. This is a guy whose foot's always on the pedal. There's no con- self congratulating going on. We listen here, Jalen Hurts sit there and be like, "I just made it. That was an unbelievable throw. I just made, or you know, or something like that." I, he he is always always on to the next thing. I need to get better. And I think when you set that kind of standard, everybody follows suit when the quarterback. Exactly. Doing that. You're you absolutely know? right. Yep. And I I think that that stuff with with the way he's gotten better. Look, the work ethic has kicked in on the uh, just the repetition and. You're trying to get better at his craft has kicked in for this guy. And now here we are, man. Um, it's been awesome to watch, frankly. It really has. His develop- like those throws that he made Sunday, maybe is the most accurate throws he's made in his career collectively. <laughs> no question about it. In one game. No question about it. I mean, his trust in, in, in throwing the touchdown, which he threw it to double coverage. But he had the trust that he could beat the throw – away from, you know, Mika Fitzpatrick getting over when they did get the double coverage. He threw it high enough, but he threw it far fast enough with enough power to get it to A.J. Brown to, for A.J. Brown to make a, a play on it. And, you know, if you if you compare the two the two throws, I mean, one of the throws, one touchdown they threw that was right in the bread backs, right over um, the outside back shoulder mm-hmm. uh, when he beat the DB. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. That was just a great pass. You know, Incredible. He had he, I mean, he had a lot of loft on it, and it dropped right into his bread box. But this pass that he threw uh, when Mika Fitzpatrick was on his way over, he knew he had to throw it, and it was a deep ball, but he knew he had to put a little more mustard on it because Mika was on his way, and he was already being covered by the DB that was on him man-to-man. And he got it there and put it only where A.J. had a play for it. Even though the safety was right there, only AJ had a play for it, and that was double coverage. That's trust number one. AJ is going to get it. You heard what AJ said um, after the game: "If I don't get it, no one gets it. No one's going to get it." And yeah. he knows that trust with him. This has made him a better quarterback, a more confident quarterback. He didn't have, he didn't have a problem with throwing it to double coverage because he understands who he's throwing it to. He would have never done that to Jalen Raker. He would have no, never wouldn't. put a ball up there for for um for you know. For a guy like that, so, I, mean, I mean, yeah. So that, that's the thing. No man's an island. Like, is has it helped him that he's got AJ Brown? Yeah, of course, of course. You know, I mean, look at Aaron Rodgers this year. Aaron Rodgers looks human. You know yes, why? You know. Because his receivers aren't good. They're not. Right. <laughs> no. okay, we we could slice no. it any way we want. We could call them young or whatever. They're not good enough. 
you finally you you not finally, but you gave a, you now gave Jalen Hurts quality receivers, and he's making it pay off for you. Um, and by the way, today AJ Brown's in the locker room. He's got a shirt that says Hurts Brown twenty two on it, like an election uh, campaign. Pretty funny uh, the relationship <laughs> with those two guys. But yeah, yeah, I mean, I, I don't think it's a coincidence that all of a sudden the numbers are up. It's it's in part because he, he, of of who Jalen Hurts is. But you you gave him help. And you, that's what you. That's why Buffalo got Stephon Diggs. You made you made Josh Allen absolutely, better. absolutely. You know? So that's yeah. I mean to me it's just it's just a gradable. I mean a, a great call by by uh, how we just getting in a guy to just change the whole outlook on how this team was going forward for the season. The addition of AJ Brown, the the ability to have his quarterback trust AJ Brown. It's something that figured into him going out and trading for AJ Brown. That's, I mean, that's that's that whole curve in which we approach this season changed with the addition of one guy on the offensive side of the ball. Right. That's crazy, but yeah. that's what it is. But we that's look think about think about it, uh, Barrett and Derek. You covered this team, but the 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 Eagles leading up to the 0-4 season were obviously a really good team. But Absolutely. but T.O. put them in a different orbit. A.J. No Brown's put the it. offense in a different orbit now. No question about it. No question about it. You know, kudos again to Howie Roseman. Once they settled in on Jalen Hurts as their quarterback, he identified what do we knew, need to do to make him more comfortable in this offense. We need another frontline receiver. You know, you could have said, well, you know, you had Devontae Smith, true. Uh, but you took it to another level and got a proven commodity, a big, strong, physical pass catcher uh, to go along. And obviously with their history together uh, from way back when, it was a slam dunk. If we can make this deal work, it's a slam dunk to get him here. And lo and behold, just the addition of that one player with Devontae Smith having another, another year under his belt, with having one of the best tight ends in the game, it has taken this offense to a completely different level. You know, when they started making moves, I was waiting, okay, what are they going to do with the running back situation? Are they going to touch it? They haven't touched the running back situation. And from the looks of it, it doesn't look like they're going to. And as I said yesterday, and I've said many times before, I don't think they need another running back for what they do with the running back situation here. Even though Miles Sanders is your workhorse, a workhorse in this, in this backfield is 15 to 18 carries a game on an average compared to some offenses that 25, 28, 31, 32 carries. You know, he's no, they don't have a Jonathan Taylor. They don't have a Derrick Henry here. You don't have a, a, a Nick Chubb here. So, But they don't need that for what they do in this offense. You know, that's why this three-headed, this three-headed backfield they have now complements each other very well. I just, for the life of me, can't figure out why they still basically neglect the Boston Scott when it comes to this offense. Um, you, you sporadically see him. Um but you can't argue with the results that you've gotten up to this point with the way they've they've moved the ball effectively. Yeah, right. I hear you, Derek, and I, and I think they, you know, maybe as the season goes on to not that you've you've given you know Miles Sanders a ton of carries, but maybe as to preserve him, you get Boston Scott a little bit more involved. I don't know. I mean, I think it's a it's going to be interesting to see what they uh, what they do. Let me throw this in there too with the Texans. Um, so they come into this thing, and I, I think we can surmise what the game plan is mm -hmm. going to be but uh the texans defensively they're not giving up a ton of points they're 17th in points allowed but what leaps out at you is they give up 186 yards per game on the ground which is the worst in the nfl last week tennessee didn't even pretend like they were going to pass the ball they just pounded derrick henry down their throat and took the <laughs> right I mean, yeah. there was nothing there was no pretense that they were going to do anything else. Okay. So I would guess this is going to be, you might see some Boston Scott in this game. Derek is my point. You know, you're going to mix him in, you know, along with miles, I would think anyway, uh, they're not like they're, they're okay against the pass. to their 17th against the pass. You go to the offensive side. They're the fourth worst team in the NFL in terms of scoring. Yep. They're 26th in rushing the ball and they're 25th in passing. It's a really bad offense. So, you know, and I don't anticipate this because the Eagles haven't done it all year. But unless the Eagles just totally overlook this team and decide we can just show up and win, 
this should be yet another game where you're not sweating it against this Texans. Yeah, another boring game. It should be another game where your your subs get to play in the fourth quarter. They yeah. may get significant minutes in the fourth quarter, and nothing wrong with that. Your starters yeah. are getting even more rest. You're going into another mini bye after this game. I have no problem with that. This the schedule has fallen perfectly for this team, um, in terms of keeping bodies healthy, uh, rotations. But I still want to see. I still want to see if, if it occurs again this week if Nicobe Dean can get on the field or not. I don't understand it. If you're bringing in subs, and this kid was highly thought of as the d- defensive player of the year. I, see now, if you're not playing, I'm wondering. Is that shoulder a problem? Is that shoulder still a problem? Because he's on special teams, so the initial answer would be no. Right. But if he can is play it, special is just teams, not, not, is he not picking it up? Is what it, I mean, was the, the problem? I, I don't know. I don't know. You know, there's no reason why you bring in all these guys with nine minutes left in the game, and he can't get one defensive snap. So, And I expect this game to be similar to what we just saw this past Sunday. Nah, nah, nah. This yes. team is devoid of – Houston team is devoid of talent – you got a quarterback who I still don't believe should be a starting quarterback in the National Football League, but mm. such is the case. Okay. You have no talent around him. Basically, you got a decent running back, but you have no talent basically around him. This game should be over by the third quarter. Get your subs in there. Let your starters rest because, you know, you get a little nicks and pains. Thank goodness. We don't have, we, other than, other than Barnett, we, and, and now obviously Jordan Davis, but luckily this team has not had one of those headlining uh, news breaks. Like so many other teams have had, this guy's out for the year, ACL, ruptured Achilles. This guy's out a significant amount of time because of this injury or that. This team has been stayed relatively healthy. Get your frontline players out of that game ASAP, but I do want to see that one player. I want to see what he can and can't do. And wh- right. Or why is he not out there in a situation like this? Fair enough. Right. Yeah, it's, it, look, until – honestly, Derek, until you brought it up, I didn't think about it. I didn't think about right. it in the last game. I Yeah, but I hear you. It's definitely something to to question, I guess. It, it's sure. when things are going as well as they're going, you know, that you don't think about this kind of thing. But it is, no. yeah, you do wonder, you do for sure. Um, all right, so we'll come back, guys. We'll we'll dig more into the NFL. It's been an active day already in terms of trades. We had a big one yesterday with which we haven't even really gotten into with Roquan Smith. Uh, oh, oh, you're going Oreos now. So what have you done? You, you've already gotten into what? What have you eaten thus far? Uh, just just the one Oreo cookie. But oh, you didn't even get any after- your candy yet. Oh, I'm, I'm going to rip into this. This is my favorites right here. I'm going to rip into this during a commercial okay. break. This when, w- this will do a David Copperfield act during a commercial break. <laughs> this will disappear so fast. I'm telling you right when now. When do you incorporate Starbursts? When is that happening? Uh, last segment. All right. Yeah, spread it out a little bit. Okay. Uh, last segment. Yeah, I got to spread right. it out. All right. We'll do some uh, some NFL talk in general when we get back. Uh, we got a lot to do here between now and the end of the program. Don't go anywhere. He's Barrett Brooks. He's Derek Gunn. I am Rob Ellis. We're Sports State, Jacob Sports YouTube Network. All right, let's talk about Razor Technology, right? Because here's what we here's what we do know in terms of change management. With threat vectors evolving, it's never been more important to monitor all the changes in your work environment and set up automated alerts for when something violates an existing policy. Get visibility into the pivotal changes happening to your systems and networks with IT support from Razor Technology. Change management is an end-to-end solution for tracking changes across all the systems and networks your businesses administers so that it has transparency into who is making changes with enough time to respond and take corrective action if necessary. As an unauthorized user, device, or application doesn't need very long to cause serious financial and reputational damage to an organization by altering, damaging, or stealing sensitive data. That's why Razor Technology uses real-time change detection to catch malicious actors in minutes, not days or weeks. Contact Razor Technology today to learn how their managed IT services can protect and enhance your business. Call 866-797-3282. That's 866-797-3282. Or visit them online at razor-tech.com. That's razor-tech.com. Philly 